Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar on the Blueprint feature in Zoho Projects. My name is Sharon and I'm a product marketer at Zoho. The Blueprint feature is built with the aim of automating various processes in your projects by setting up workflows in place. Today, I'm going to show you how to design and set up such workflows with the help of a few scenarios. If I am successful in explaining the feature to you, by the end of this tutorial, you should be able to create a blueprint, design a process flow, configure transition settings, and execute the process easily. So let's get started. What problems do blueprints really solve for your organization? Zoho Projects is built with the aim of making work easier for you, removing mundane, recurring work that can easily be automated and alerting the right people at the right time. Now, as you know, managers often spend a lot of their time training new recruits, trying to assist them in understanding the processes followed in the organization. And at any point of the workflow, if the right process is not followed, it can lead to delays, customer dissatisfaction, and even customer attrition in extreme cases. So when you have hundreds of employees and innumerable task processes right from the initiation of a project to its completion, what better way is there of making sure the right process is followed all the time without you having to check in? Blueprints capture every detail of your workflows, defining each stage in a process and associating people with each step. When a detailed workflow is available, Teams can educate themselves through the execution and automate routine actions easily. To illustrate how blueprints work, let's consider a software company called Zilka who use Zoho to manage their many projects. For now, let's turn our focus onto their content management team. This is a simple workflow they have in place for the task of content review. So in a typical scenario, once a new task comes up, such as a new web page, for instance, the content writer will work on the draft and once the draft is ready, he or she will be ready to submit it for review. So if the review team approves, changes are made and the content is finalized and finally published. If not, the content is put on hold or it is sent back to the writer to be reworked. Now, blueprints consist of two primary components, statuses and transitions. Understanding these terms is crucial to designing and executing blueprints successfully. Each stage in a workflow is known as a status. So in this example, open, in progress, published and on hold are some of the statuses of the review process. Whereas Transition is the link between two statuses and describes the condition under which a status changes from one to the other. For example, once a draft has been submitted for review, the review team can either go ahead and complete the review or suspend the document temporarily so that it's on hold or send it back to be redone. So at the stage called in progress, these three are the three transitions possible, suspend, review, and redo. Now let's move on to the demo. Now this is the home page of Zilka. So first go to your setup page in the top right corner. Navigate to task automation under portal configuration and choose blueprint on the left hand menu. So this is where you can come to, to create a new blueprint. Click on this button at the top right corner. You will be asked to fill in a couple of mandatory fields such as the blueprint name and the task layout to which you want this particular workflow to be applied. I hope you are aware of the layout feature in projects. If not, let me give you a brief introduction. So from the setup page, choose layouts and fields under portal configuration and switch to the tasks menu on the left hand side. So as you can see here, you can create task layouts for your projects. There is one default layout called the standard layout, 
which you can reorder or edit or even add new fields to and then save. Otherwise, you can create unlimited number of custom layouts depending upon your varying project requirements. In order to create a new layout, just select any of the existing layouts to clone from and edit or add to those layouts as needed by dragging and dropping existing fields or even creating new fields. So these fields can be text, numeric, date, pick list, etc. Now after saving the layout, all you have to do is associate projects with it. For example, as you can see here for this particular layout called construction, there are no projects associated currently. So let's associate this project called the Donnelly Apartments Construction, which is currently a part of the standard layout. But we are making this a part of the construction layout. So we're going to associate it. And you can see that there are certain default fields as well as certain additional fields that we have added here. Now, since the Donnelly Apartments construction project is associated with this particular layout, you will be able to see all these fields in place whenever you add a new task to the project. For example, you can see all of those fields listed here. Now, coming back to your blueprints, today I'm going to create a blueprint for the software testing process that Zilka follows. And this is going to be applied to the software development layout. So whenever you select a specific task layout to which you want to apply a new blueprint, do note that all the projects that are associated with the layout will follow the blueprint once it's been published and enabled. So if there are 10 projects that are associated with the layout, once the blueprint is enabled, all the 10 projects will follow this task process. So this means that if you want only selected projects in a layout to follow the blueprint, then either dissociate those projects from the layout and add them to a different one or specify the criteria for which this particular blueprint has to be enabled. So this means that you can mention here that only if the project name is so and so or if the project owner is a particular person, uh, the blueprint should be executed. You can even specify whether you want the blueprint to be executed only for a specific task name. So here I want this to be ex executed only if the task name contains the word test. So I'm going to save this. So once you save this, your new blueprint is created. The next step is to design the workflow in the blueprint editor. So you can see that on the right side of the page, the blueprint details as well as existing task statuses are visible. So these are statuses that are currently a part of that particular task layout. You can add new statuses here too. All you have to do is give it a name and set a status type to open or closed. You may even choose a color if needed. So now all you have to do to get started is to drag and drop these available status to the blueprint editor or you can create and add new ones. And of course it goes without saying that you can start to an open status type only. Similarly you can end the workflow only to a close type status. So you can connect the nodes from one status to the next status in the workflow to establish a connection between task statuses. No status must be left disconnected in the blueprint. And to add a new status, I can also drag a node from a status in the blueprint editor. All I have to do is edit the status name here and set the status type and choose a color if needed. Note that the newly added statuses will be saved to the layout only when you publish the blueprint. Now to edit or delete a status, click the status name in the workflow to open up the status details, edit the necessary details or trash the status as required. However, you have to note here that you will not be able to edit the status type once a task has been updated with the status.
Now, as discussed earlier, transition is a link between two statuses. So it is indicated by this plus icon here. And unless every transition and status is named, you cannot publish the blueprint. Also note that all statuses and transitions must have unique names. So let me just set up the workflow here. Now, as I told you, this is a workflow that Zilka follows for its software testing process. Now, as you can see here, every status must have at least one incoming transition and one outgoing transition, except closed type statuses, which may or may not have outgoing transitions. So let me publish this blueprint quickly. Once published, the tasks matching the blueprint criteria alone follows the process workflow as defined. However, the blueprint will not apply to existing tasks. Only new tasks that match the blueprint criteria will follow the blueprint. So let's create a new task and check out how the blueprint is reflected. Now I'm selecting this project called the Zilsoft mobile app and it's already been associated with the software development layout. So I'm going to create this new task called the alpha test and another one called the beta test. I'm selecting Kavita to be the owner or the assignee of the task. So as you can see here, the criteria for the blueprint was that the task name should contain the word test and that criteria is being fulfilled. There is also an icon to indicate the tasks that follow the blueprint. Now, by default, since Kavita is the task assignee, she alone will be able to view and make all the transitions. Now, uh, you can note that this is Helen's account. And so when you open the task, though the blueprint preview will be available to Helen, she will not be able to make any of the transitions. Whereas in Kavita's account, now, as you can see here, I've switched to Kavita's account. Since she is the assignee of the task, by default, she should be able to carry out the transitions. Now, each transition has a before, during and after transition settings that you can configure as needed. Now, sometimes though a task may be assigned to two developers in your team, you may only want the senior developer to make a certain transition. For instance, moving the task status from level one testing to issues found. So in the before transition settings, you can decide who gets to view and perform this particular transition. So by default, as I told you, it is the assignee itself. You can change this to be the project owner, the manager, or any other user role or even client users. So here I'm going with Helen. Only the selected users or roles will be able to view the transition button and perform the transition. For example, here, since Helen is the transition owner, she alone will be able to make this transition. However, even though Kavita is assigned the task, the transition will not be visible to her. So I'm going to publish this and show you. 
Now this is Helen's account. So when I open this particular task, you can see that this particular transition is visible to her. Whereas when I go back to Kavita's account, that particular transition for that task will not be visible. So as you can see in the blueprint review, the transition of suspending and starting phase two testing will be visible to Kavita, but the transition of issues existing will not be visible to Kavita. On the other hand, if no users are selected here, then the transition will be available to all of the users. You can also define an AND or criteria under which the transition should be triggered. For instance, let's say only if the completion percentage is 90%, then only the transition will be possible. So once you publish this, you will be able to see that unless the percentage completed is marked as 90%, the transition will not be possible. So we're saving this and I'm publishing it. So now ideally that transition should be visible to Kavita since she's the assignee. But you will be able to see that it's not available here. Now when I update the completion percentage here to 90%, you can see that it's now become visible. So unless the criteria is fulfilled, the transition will not be possible. Now the during transition settings is where you can set up custom fields and messages. So if a field is set up, then that information should be filled by the transition owner for the transition to be completed. For example, let's consider this transition from issues found to issues fixed ongoing. So let's say that during this transition, the transition owner has to specify the priority of the task. And we also want him to add in a comment on the issues found. So you can make these fields mandatory to make it compulsory for the user to fill in the field. Let's say we also want a message to pop up as a reminder that high priority tasks have to be completed in three working days. Now you can reorder these fields and messages by dragging and dropping them in the desired sequence. Now let's publish this and see how the automated fields and messages come up during the transition. So now I'm in Kavita's account and I'm enabling this transition. So you can see here that the fields and messages pop up in that particular sequence. And now since these fields are mandatory, I have to fill in these fields for the transition to take place. So the next one is the after transition. So this helps you perform automated actions after a transition has been executed. So for example, let's consider this particular transition here. So you can configure email alerts and send notifications to specific users or teams when a transition has been completed. So here, for example, after the issue has been fixed, an email alert can be sent to the testing team so that the testing process can be restarted. So you can either associate an existing email alert or you can create a new one. So all you have to do is just give an email alert name, select the users that you want to notify. This can be your project owner, uh, followers of the transition if any, task owners or any other user roles and you just have to save it or you can even go back and associate your other email alerts as I said. Once the transition has been made, the email notification or an alert will be sent to all these people. You can also update specific field values too when a transition is completed. Now, for example, let's say that the due date of the task has to be updated after the second phase of testing transition. So again, once this is published, you will be able to see how this is reflected when you perform the transition. So now when I go to Kavita's account and I enable this transition, an email alert will be sent to everyone. So here I have Helen's mail opened here. Let's see if she's received a notification. Yes. So she has gotten an email alert just as we set up. Now coming back to the common transition. So the common transition can be accessed from some or all statuses in the workflow. 
For example, this testing process can be put on hold at any time. However, as you can see here, only the level one testing status can move to the on hold status via the suspend transition. Now to allow for all the other statuses to use this transition, this suspend transition can be marked as a common transition from all statuses to on hold. So this means that this particular transition will be available in the task detail page for all the statuses by default. You can deselect statuses that you want to exclude here. Now once all the statuses and transitions you need are configured, you can publish the blueprint. But if you do not want to publish your blueprint yet, you can click cancel to save it as a draft and continue to configure statuses and transitions. Do note that all your blueprints have to begin with an open type status and end with a closed type status. Otherwise, you will not be able to publish it. Now, blueprints are grouped based on project layouts and will be executed in the order in which they are listed in the grouping. You may reorder these as required. You can also clone and delete a blueprint here. However, you cannot delete a blueprint if you have tasks active in the process currently. Now, in this case, you can just disable the blueprint. Once created, every blueprint is enabled by default. You can disable a blueprint if you do not want tasks to enter the blueprint process. And please note that this feature is only available in the premium and enterprise plans of Zoho projects. And by default, only the admins should be able to create and design workflows. Access can, however, be provided to others in your organization too by editing permissions for user profiles from the setup page. So navigate to profiles and roles under manage users to edit permissions accordingly. Well, this is it. This is the end of the demo. Do explore the feature and let us know what you think. And if you have any further queries, do mail us at support at zohoprojects.com or tweet to us at zoho, at zohocares or at zohoprojects. Alternatively, you can also tweet me personally at srejisam, my Twitter handle. Have a great day and many happy projects.